You fellas ready to go to Montana? <laughs> We're fixing to kick off season three of Red Arrow on Outdoor Channel here. And what better place to do it than where we always kick off the show. Montana, man. It's a target rich environment. We drove all through the night without stopping from Virginia. We're pretty pumped, man. We're in a sea of antelope out here right now. I'm thinking about taking this Dodge right down through that barbed wire fence and just running one down. So we made the plan to head out to historic Three Forks, Montana. And if you guys don't know, it's where Lewis and Clark headed up the Missouri River and came to, spoiler alert, Three Forks. And they had to pick a route so that they didn't have to go over top of the Rocky Mountains in the dead of winter. Now, I'm not going to bore you with a lot of history on this stuff because that's what the History Channel is for. This is the Killing Deer Channel, at least when you're watching our show it is. You want it? You done? Watch him. Exhibit A. A redneck like me will lose his mind out here. I, I just can't understand how I mean, you know, there's this many good deer. B. Yeah. He's bladed. Look how bladed he is. One of the coolest deer I've ever shot by far. Some of the best footage I've ever seen. Exhibit C. <laughs> Son, it don't get no better than this out here in Montana in a snowstorm. Well, this trip to Montana, although it is a tradition and we go every year, is going to be a lot different than anything we've ever done before because we're going to a whole different part of the state and we're bringing my dad along to try to get his first ever white-tailed deer with a Hoyt bow. Well, I'm mean as gravel, I'm poor as dirt. And I like things better the way they work. Well, I'm strong in the head, but I get things done. I spend too much money to have a little fun. Come on. You know, my dad is like a lot of y'all's dads. He, he was an outdoorsman. He loved to hunt and he particularly loved to fish, man. This sucker, he could he'd catch a fish in a mud puddle. That was his main thing, but he also, you know, deer hunted, rabbit hunted, squirrel hunted. He brought me up on squirrel hunting. He instilled in me the love for the outdoors and led me to pursue this, not only being a bow hunter, but this is a career. When Kip was four or five years old, I had a friend of mine who just started bow hunting and he got my interest up, so we went out together and started shooting and practicing, and he took me a couple times here. And... I think some of my earliest memories are being so mad at them that I could spit because they wouldn't take me bow hunting because I wasn't old enough yet. Kip wanted to go along with us. He was too young at the time. He'd get mad and start crying because we wouldn't take him with us. But I never got to kill one. I was just learning at the time. And I finally, when I became a police officer a couple of years later, kind of got busy and uh, I really didn't have any luck because I had some bad luck and just kind of lost interest, got busy at work. Kip got interested in it and from there, he lost his mind, that's all he wanted to do. And about the time that I got addicted to bow hunting, Dad got super busy with the police department, so he basically quit hunting 20 some odd years ago. You know, he devoted his life to serving Charlottesville, Virginia in the police department. 17 years of my career I spent as a commander of a Jade Task Force, which was a narcotics enforcement task force there in Charlottesville. Uh, it was our job to uh, investigate drug uh, crimes, gang crimes, and violence associated with that. If I had to do it all again, I'd do it again. I love the guys I work with, the, the bravest people in the world, and uh, I miss them every day. You know, a few years ago I carried him out to New Zealand for our first trip and he hadn't shot a bow in years, so he just went ahead and took the rifle, but he said to me after that trip, he said, man, I'd, I'd really like to get back into bow hunting. We got him a Hoyt, and he started practicing. I was amazed at the uh, change in technology since I had first started bow hunting 30 years ago. I just felt so natural to, to pull it back and to hold it and 
take the shot. I mean, it felt it felt comfortable. This was going to be kind of my my payback for him showing me the outdoor lifestyle and and introducing me to the outdoors. Is I was going to carry him up to Montana. And we were going to get a bow kill no matter what we had to do. Well, we rolled into the Lewis and Clark Sportsman Lodge and got to meet our guides Cody and Jordan. Now, after we got all our things settled in. It was time to look at the hunting property. This is the shooting range right here. Shoot our hoists, make sure they made the trip. And time to get up in the tree stand, man. We were going to get to hunt that evening. Well, this is the first night we sat in a stand in Montana. Some mountains all around us, snow-capped mountains. And right in the heart of Montana. So we we're looking forward to smacking a whitetail. This will be our kickoff hunt for the season. That's what we love to do. We elk hunt. We do all kinds of other stuff. Whitetails is where it's at for us, man. So I'll be interested to see how good this place is. Saw a big buck coming in, so hopefully he walked within 50 yards or less. I'm in the saddle of your snow white This must be heaven. I stumbled in. Why? The setup that we were hunting was kind of crazy because it was a small patch of woods and hundreds and hundreds of acres of alfalfa fields. So the deer, they felt safe in the woods and way out in the middle of these alfalfa fields. <laughs> the deer were sprinting, literally sprinting sometimes through these transition areas to get out to the middle of the alfalfa fields where they felt safe. They would be coming from here and you're set up right and all of a sudden they'd be behind you because they ran past you. So you definitely had to have your dead downwind scent control on point while you're out there. And your breath of I just found heaven. I'm out of touch and This kind of hunting will ruin an old Virginia boy, I tell you what. And I think this was already blowing Dad's mind a little bit because probably in all the years that he hunted in Virginia, he didn't see this many deer total, much less see them all at once. Look at a bunch of deer out in the field. I just hope some of the bigger bucks are waiting back until it's just about dark come through here. You make me feel it from my neck to my feet. You get me sky. Now we told Dad and Jeff, like, y'all make sure that y'all communicate a little bit. And I told Dad, I said, hey, you gotta wait till Jeff gives you the green light to shoot. I'm pretty sure Dad didn't hear anything I said in that whole conversation because the first decent buck that dad got in range, he was at full draw trying to stop the deer to shoot it before Jeff even got the camera on him. Thought he was about 20 some yards and. I was wrong. I heard a whack, did you hear a whack? Yeah, uh, sticks and rocks make whack sounds too, Dad. Put it right on his shoulder. I don't know if I hit him or not. I never, I didn't look at his shot after I shot it. I don't know what that means. I'm assuming it means that he missed me. He didn't stumble or anything. First attempt to kill a buck, I choked. It's like I just rushed my shot, got too excited. That's good, he got a chance, but he'll get the next one. he get that buck favor out of the way, he'll get the next one. Uh, son sitting behind us in Montana for our first day. Saw probably, I don't even know how many deer, probably 7,500 deer. And uh, 
had some good bucks out there too. Dad whiffed on one, man. I wanted him to kill one so bad. He, you know, it's just the first day, so hopefully he got that out of the system. I think he got a little buck fever. Rushed the shot a little bit, which is easy for anybody to do. Good day, man. Good day of deer hunting. You sit here and see him the whole time. We're gonna go back. Go back to the hotel in town and grab a bite to eat and be out here the first thing in the morning. Good, good start to a hunt. I love Montana. It's day two in Montana. We're in the same stand that we were in last night. There's a few deer over by these haystacks just feeding around in the alfalfa. So hopefully some of these deer that go to the far alfalfa field will come back through this little hedgerow. I'm gonna get Daddy a doe tag today so he can maybe do a little warm-up shot. He's already had one warm-up shot. He ended up having one come in fast and he ended up hitting a limb. Deflected his arrow off into the dirt. So I get him another shot though. There's plenty of deer around here. Straight across a great divide And her heart ran cold But her love runs deep She's fire on the mountain Wrecking everyone she meets She's like rain when she rolls in But there's sunshine and a thunder Makes the loneliest heart wonder If the ride is worth the pain Might not be still clouds inside Oh, but don't you worry, friend She's coming around the bend She's holding lightning in both hands Me and Josh saw a good group of bucks come through, but we were just out of range of the deer when they would actually come back through to go to bed. The other thing about these deer is they feel so safe in these alfalfa fields, sometimes they just bed down right in the middle of them. We were back day two Milford Road Outfitters. We came in this morning, the same stand. We saw uh, buku, does, and some few nice bucks, but they were too far away to shoot. Uh, today we decided if we get the opportunity to do a little meat hunting, we went and bought a dope stamp just in case it kept coming through like they have been. She's like rain, she rolls in, but the sunshine in the thunder. She's coming around the bend, she's holding lightning in both hands. Mm. That must my own pen again. Dad, I think missed another deer. I think Dad brought him a quiver of arrows and he, he was fixing to shoot them all. <laughs> I'll try to laugh me up and punch me while I'm asleep. Hey, this deer was mature. He was definitely a shooter as far as age class goes, but I was holding out for something with a little bit more headgear. I'm not a trophy snob, but I've just seen all the big deer that are on here. We can got a couple days left, and we can probably get a big one. I just hope I don't regret that. Now, Dad, he got covered up in deer that day. A group of real nice bucks moved in on his back door and just bedded down. The problem is the, the cottonwood tree he was in is so big he can't turn and shoot behind him. Jeff can film them perfect. And it seems like they're right there. I mean, definitely the first pin. I mean, they're 20 yards or less.
Day three, pretty much over. We run out of light. Really, I'm kind of looking forward to when that happens so we can go get a hot meal and dry off a little bit. It's been nasty weather. I'm having fun. I mean, I'm having fun seeing all the deer and stuff, but I really want to let the air out of one bad. So we'll see how it goes. There was this one stand I've been eyeballing all week, and we had talked about getting in it over by the barns, and it's just kind of a goofy little tree. It wasn't very high off the ground, and it was kind of out in the middle of nothing. But the pattern that we picked up from these deer is that's the kind of area that they like to feel comfortable in. That's the kind of area they wanted to travel in. So we decided, hey man, let's get up in this goofy little tree. It's day four. Rained us out of the morning hunt. Um, as windy as it can be right now, but we're up in this tiny little tree about 10 feet off the ground. But we already had, you know, doe and two yearlings come by us and they didn't, they didn't bust us at all. Probably should have shot the doe, but I wanted to let that first group of deer get by to give the rest of these bucks and stuff some confidence to walk on by. If they all do like she did, we'll be in good shape. The deer are sneaking up, up on us from everywhere. They're all coming through here, so. There's all these old falling down barns. They walk right beside them. So I got two shooting lanes on me. They ought to go either one of those two shooting lanes, so. This is it, man, day four. Got a couple more days left. I need some meat and some bone. I'll try to collect some bone. It didn't seem like anything was really going on. It wasn't gonna happen again that evening. And then all of a sudden, we see this one little buck break cover, and behind him is a real nice 10 pointer. I said, Lord, all we need is one to walk 20 yards. I mean, I smoked this, but blood just <laughs> He's slightly cornered. I gave him no hang. There was buried all that to the fletching. Get off me, big buck. Oh, we, we smacked him down, son. <laughs> yeah, he's dead. It's kind of the uh, kind of point of the show right there. I'm tired of talking. Let's go get this thing, man. I don't even think y'all are ready for this Montana 10 pointer right here, son. His rack is a little redneck looking right now because of what that broadhead did to him and what that hoit. Yes, sir. You, sometimes in Montana, you got to pinch yourself, man, and just think that. Am I dreaming? I mean, is this real, this beautiful country? And there's snow-capped mountains in the background. We are truly living a dream out there in Montana. Kind of like old Ted Nugent. <laughs> if it's got some meat under that hide right there, I'm pumping. That's a good set of headgear, man. It's a 10-pointer is a 10-pointer. I like that little crab claw he's got, too. It's pretty. He's got good, good thirds. You know, a buck like this is a, a trophy with a bow and arrow, man. I told Josh in the tree stand, my, little, my youngest daughter was coloring with my wife today, and she goes, Daddy's going to be happy today. He's going to kill a big buck. <laughs> she was right, man. Izzy, you were right. One of my favorite one of my favorite states to hunt in, Montana. You can see why right here. Dude, thank you for real. Yep. This has been a hunt of a lifetime, seriously. Seeing all these deer, smoking that big old bad boy right there. People getting too snobby. Seems like in the hunting industry the other day, they're like, oh, he's only on 125. He's only on 130. If one of those only comes about me, he's only going to never draw another breath, I can tell you that. Hey, y'all might want to watch, watch where you set your bow down. There's some sharp, uh, there's some sharp points back here. He's a good one, ain't he, Daddy? 
he, he made a bad mistake. I really wanted to put this thing into one show, but there's just too much footage, too much action to fit it into just one show. So we're going to have to come back next week to see if Dad finally gets it done. <laughs>